thanks so much for being timely and uh, for uh, taking the time out. For I prepared quite a bit to talk to you about, and uh, I want to share uh, a topic that is something that is um, kind of an ongoing theme at Bestseller Publishing and something that I speak to you, my clients, about quite often, and that is making offers. Um, some of you may understand completely what I say when I, or what I mean when I say making offers, some of you not. So I'm going to give a little bit of background. I'm going to explain a little bit about what I mean, and then I'm going to go into details and we're going to look at four key steps to making um, an incredible offer to your marketplace, to your ideal clients. Okay. Now, when I say making an offer or uh, offering something to your ideal clients, I hope that you already know what that means, meaning that you have an expertise, you're serving people in a specific way, you're helping people to overcome some type of what I may call a bleeding neck issue, meaning something that is serious in their life, serious enough for them to be willing to write you a really big check. I know others of you are figuring out, uh, Martin uh, typed in bleeding neck, you're, you're figuring out uh, how to narrow down because you can help so many people in so many different ways. You have to figure out how to narrow down what you're going to solve for somebody. You can't just fix everything for everybody. It doesn't work that way. No one will buy that. Uh, even if they believe that was true, which they don't believe that's true. So I'm not going to give a lot of uh, preliminaries. There are trainings within BSPU on how to determine your bleeding neck problem, how to really think about uh, what it is that you do, the market that you serve, et cetera. Um, that is not what we're going to be doing today. Today, we're already assuming that you know the market that you're serving. We're already assuming that you have a pretty general or, or at least a pretty clear idea, at least generally, on who it is that you help, how it is that you help them. And now what we have to do is we have to take that expertise and we have to package it in such a way that makes it really compelling for people to buy. That's what we want. We want to craft a compelling offer that people think, oh my gosh, I would be foolish, silly, not to purchase this. Now, when it comes to making offers, um, understand three things. Number one, the more offers you make, the more people you help, okay? So the very first thing that people think about is money. And sometimes we have hangups about money. Okay, well, making offers is like always trying to sell something and, and you have your own hangup about, used car salesman, and maybe a time that you got taken by somebody that was really salesy. And so because of that, you bristle, whether it's internally or externally, about the idea of being too salesy. Okay, so let's take away the psychological issue that maybe that we all face about these various things, right? And let's just think about it this way. The more offers that you make, the more people that you're actually helping, okay? If you really have something, that can make a difference in somebody else's life, and you're not making an offer to help them in that way, then what good are you doing for them? You're not doing any good for them whatsoever. So first and foremost, the more offers you make, the more impact you're going to make on the world. And if you're not making offers, you're probably not making very much of an impact either. Number two, the more offers you make, the better your offers will become. The more offers you make, the better your offers will become. Sometimes there's a steep learning curve when it comes to communicating your value to other people within an offer. Now, some of what I'm going to be teaching today hopefully will help with that. And I have a document that you guys can refer back to, and I'll put that in the Facebook group as well. But just understand this, the more times you do something, the better you're going to be at doing that thing. So if you struggle with making offers, or maybe people aren't taking you up on your offers, keep doing it. You'll get better. Okay. You're not going to get worse. I promise you're going to get better. So just because it didn't work the first time or the second time, or even the third time, don't quit what you're doing. And then last but not least, look, the bottom line, the absolute truth 
is if you want to make more money, you have to make more offers. Making more offers will make you more money. January was the best month um, in my company's history. That's January. For a lot of people, they're just getting ramped back up in January. They're just getting started again. It was our best month by a wide margin. February was our best February ever. It wasn't our best month ever. That was January. But it was our best February ever by far. I've already noticed in March that we're getting a little bit of a slow start. You know why that is? Because me and my sales team are making fewer offers. Now, when I say I'm making offers, again, we're going to dive down into some of the minutia of that in just a few minutes. But understand, making offers can be something that you do one-on-one -on -one with somebody. Um, let's say that you have a communication with someone on LinkedIn. Uh, it's clear that they need your help, whatever that is. And uh, you schedule a 10-minute call, maybe some type of discovery conversation. And maybe in that 10 or 15 minutes, you can't get to the point of making an offer. And so you instead offer to have a secondary call with them to go even deeper. And on that secondary call, if you do not make an offer to work with you, to make whatever change that you can make in their life, in their business, in their relationship, in their family, whatever, then you're doing them a disservice and yourself a disservice. So it can happen one-on-one. -on -one. It can happen one-to-many. It can happen in a workshop. It can happen in a webinar. It can happen in a, uh, a call like this, a Zoom call that you do with a few different people. In one sense, it doesn't matter how it happens. Just understand the more offers you make to more people, the more people you're going to help, the better you're going to get at making those offers and the more money that you're going to make in that process. Okay. So that's just the preliminary part. There's obviously, depending on where you're at in your business and with the thing that you're selling, um, this is going to be more or less applicable. Uh, for all of you, you're going to have to take some type of steps in the process I'm going to share with you in the next few minutes. But for some of you, you're a little bit further back. I understand that. There's more training in BSPU. Uh, hopefully, this will help you and you'll see the examples and things will begin to crystallize for you. But this is for people that already know, this is who I helped. This is who my ideal client is. Now I need to craft something that's really going to make a difference in somebody else's life. Okay? All right. So let's go ahead and share my screen. I'm just going to show you a Word doc that I created, and I'm going to go through this with you step by step. Let me move my camera here so that I can see my screen better. All of you should be able to see my screen, and it may be clear or not clear. Don't worry. I'm going to go through each and every one of these steps. A lot of what I'm going to teach is out of Alex Hormozzi's book, $100 Million Offers. If you don't have that book, Highly recommend it. It's a great book. It's a big, like eight and a half by 11, ugly purple book. Uh, Alex is a friend, somebody that I was in uh, Russell Brunson's inner circle with um, before he ever started his first business, uh, which he sold for, I believe it was like $46 million. Um, when he was in the inner circle, he was a great salesman, but he really didn't have a great offer. When he put together a great offer, and he put together the business behind that offer, everything exploded for him. So a lot of what I'm going to share are some steps that he goes over in this book, and I'm trying to crystallize it for you and share the details. Okay. All right. So when it comes to your offer, I'm going to give you four steps here or four pieces of this puzzle that you need to put together. Number one, you have to identify the ideal outcome or the dream outcome of your prospect. You need to identify the ideal or dream outcome of your prospect so that, number one, good people feel foolish. In this doc, it says they feel dumb for not taking you up on your offer. Have you ever spoken to somebody and they made you an offer that was so good that you just feel like, how can I say no to this? I would be foolish to say no to this offer. That is what you want to craft for somebody else. You want to dot every I, cross every T, so that all they can do is say, of course, I would like to work with you. Of course, I would like to take the next step. Uh, 1B, understand that you're never selling the plane flight, you're selling the vacation. 
The offer is not about the plane flight. It's not about the Uber to the airport. It's not about the features. It's not about the steps. It's about the excitement of the vacation. It's about being on the beach with a margarita in your hand and your toes in the sand and enjoying it. Too many people think that a great offer has all of these steps in it. Well, first, we're going to pick you up at your house in an Uber, and then you're going to have an hour-long slog through traffic to get to the airport, and then you're going to be abused by the TSA in the airport, and you're going to get on an airplane, and it's going to be like a cattle call, and through that cattle call and all the horrible things that happen to you, you're eventually going to get to your destination. Those are terrible things. No one wants to do all that. All they want to do is picture themselves on the beach with their toes in the sand, drinking a margarita. Okay. Now think about what the application of that is for you. You know, for bestseller publishing, there's an application for that. There's a lot of steps and minutia that goes into me helping you to write a best-selling book. Do I go into every one of those pieces? Of course not. I have team members that help with editing and proofreading, that help with design. But there's so many things that can be overwhelming. It's not about the plane flight. It's about the vacation. Okay? So think of it in those terms. And then 1C, think of the ideal outcome minus any difficulty or time issue. So let me give you some examples. It's lose 20 pounds in six weeks. It's not join this boot camp. It's not uh, work one on one with me in coaching. It's not join this membership program and this result will happen. Nobody wants another membership. Nobody wants to spend more time in the gym. Nobody wants to go to a fitness boot camp. What they want is to lose 20 pounds in six weeks if they're in that in that space, in that niche, okay? So think about what your ideal client wants, what their dream outcome is, and then help them to craft or, or craft an offer to help them to get that ideal outcome in that. You solve the pain and the difficulty. We created a, a, an offer for Authority Speakers Agency. And so when we crafted the offer, it was really simple. Instead of thinking about all the minutia that goes into booking somebody for a speaking gig, we said, we're going to book you for three speaking engagements in 90 days. I don't care if you've never had a speaking engagement before. We're not going to have you join a speaking membership or a speaker's boot camp. You're not going to have to spend, you know, three hours a week with Amy or with me. No. We're going to book you for three speaking engagements in 90 days. So we're solving the problem. We're giving you the dream outcome, and we're doing it for you in 90 days. Now, there's, there's other pieces to that, but you get the idea. So again, identify the ideal or dream outcome that your people are interested in. A sub note to that, and this is something that attorneys, therapists, um, uh, psychologists, psychotherapists, et cetera, that they do. And, and many coaches do this as well. You block your, your um, time and you um, sell your program based on a number of hours with you. And your revenue is directly tied to you spending time with your client. That's a terrible outcome. That is not what your client wants. And that's not the best thing for you. I don't care if you charge $500 an hour, you're still capping your revenue and you're still um, selling time for dollars. Do not do that. That's, that's really not why people are coming to you. They're coming to you to solve a problem. They're coming to you for this dream outcome. Give them the dream outcome. Don't think that they need X number of hours with you. That's not what they're buying. They only want that because they think that's what's going to solve their problem. Instead, show them, no, I have something else that's going to solve your problem, this program, this thing, et cetera. Okay. Number two, after you do this, and this is something you need to do for yourself. I hope you're already taking notes and thinking, okay, what's my dream outcome? My dream outcome for my client is to get this in this period of time. Fantastic. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to list out the problems, the problems that somebody is going to have in getting this dream outcome. All struggles and whatever their limiting beliefs are around that. Now, what does that mean? Well, 
think about what happens before your ideal outcome and what happens after your ideal outcome. Uh, in the writing space, in the becoming a best-selling author space, we know what happens at the moment. You are now a best-selling author. What happens before that? Well, all the pain, all the, you know, what if my writing isn't good? What if I don't know how what to write? Uh, I can't write a thousand words a day. What happens after that? Well, what if I get bad reviews? What if nobody buys my book? Uh, what if my book isn't successful, et cetera? So all of those befores and afters are potential problems, okay? So an example, again, using fitness, buying healthy food, grocery shopping, that's hard. It's confusing. It takes time. It can be expensive to buy healthy food. This is what may go on in somebody's mind when they're thinking about losing 20 pounds in six weeks. Okay, well, that means I'm going to have to start eating healthier again. And who's got time for grocery shopping? And, and, and I don't even know what to buy when I go to the grocery store. And I always just go down the candy aisle and I buy chocolate or whatever, right? That's what I do. The other thing they might think is, well, exercising regularly, I know they're going to want me to exercise regularly. And, and that's hard. I mean, my gym membership, uh, the card uh, has mold on it. It's been so long since I took it out of my, my wallet. Uh, it's confusing. It's time consuming, right? All those things. Uh, using the speaking example opportunity, finding speaking engagements is hard. It's confusing. Uh, where do I go? H how do I find the person that's in charge of making the event decision? etc. All those things are difficult. So you need to know what those things are. And then you're going to think about the negatives of each one of those things. Okay. So the dream outcome, what's the negative there? Well, you know, is it going to be financially worth it? So I am a best-selling author, but I had to invest this amount of money and this amount of time. Is that really going to be worth it for me? That's what people are deciding when they're deciding to take you up on your offer or not. Is it going to be financially worth it for me to do this? Uh, likelihood of success. This is where all of the internal failures come out in someone's limiting beliefs. Uh, you know, this won't work for me. I, I've quit diet programs. I have failed at trying to get myself back into shape so many times. I just don't have the discipline. It won't work for me, right? So that that's part of the limiting belief that somebody has about their ability to succeed at whatever it is that you're going to help them with. Effort. You know, uh, people are concerned about effort. This will be too hard. I won't be good at it. Uh, you know, the speaking engagement, you know, what if I get on stage and fail? I don't know how to do it. I'm, I'm afraid. Understandable. Time, this will take too long and I'm too busy. So those, those four things, the outcome and, and the financial, uh, if, if it's financially based, it might not be financially based. It might be something else. The likelihood of success effort, time. Okay. You need to think about the negatives. Why are we thinking about the negatives? Because we're going to use those negatives and we're going to answer those objections within our offer. Okay. One of the things that, that I do when I do like workshops, and you guys know this, uh, we make an offer on our workshops. This is the authority speakers agency offer that we made. And so within the offer, uh, we, of course, have a, a 20 minute explanation of the offer. But what I do within the offer is I craft these deliverables. And every one of these deliverables, as well as the bonuses themselves, are to answer these questions. So if somebody is thinking, well, is this going to be financially worth it? We give examples and case studies and show people how getting on the right stages is more than financially worth it, right? As well as the, the sense of self-esteem and, and value to do it. Uh, the same with likelihood of success, the same with effort, the same with time. So you want to answer those mental objections that somebody has within your case studies and within your offer itself, okay? Number three, what you're going to do is you're going to offer the solution, right? Okay, number one, you're going to figure out what the dream outcome is. Then you're going to figure out what the big problems and objections are. And then we're going to craft the solution. So an example, grocery shopping is time consuming and hard. and I won't be able to do it. Okay. 
Well, what's the solution to that? Well, I'm going to show you how to make buying healthy food easy, enjoyable, and even cheaper than your current grocery bill. What did that do? Well, that eliminated. Now, obviously, that has to be true, but it can be true. There, there's just work involved in that. And so you need to make sure that you find a true way to help them to overcome what their own fears and internal issues are, right? And if you can't do that, then you, you obviously can't say that, but be creative. If you're good at your thing, um, then either A, charge more and do it for them, right? Or B, solve the problem in some other way. Um, another example, exercising regularly is time consuming and hard and I won't be able to do it. Well, I'm going to give you an easy to follow exercise system that everyone enjoys, even busy moms, if that's your target audience. So create high value for the prospect that they financially value, that helps them believe that they can do it, that they can succeed, that helps them to succeed more easily and helps them succeed faster. Okay. That's these four negative elements, right? You want to show them that this is valuable and it does meet and exceed whatever financial equivalent is that they're putting in for this offer of yours. It helps them believe that they can succeed. It deals with that internal doubt, false beliefs, and it helps them succeed more easily and faster. That's what your offer should do. And by the way, if as you craft your offer, you think to yourself, well, my offer doesn't really help them to do it faster. Oh, well, that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? Then you need a better offer, meaning that you need to find a solution that is faster, right? That is easier for them. Faster may not be the right uh, the right word, but you understand, right? If If on any of these um, uh, subjects, you look at your offer and you're like, well, my offer doesn't really do that. My offer, then it's probably not valuable enough. And you have to find a way to make it better so that your ideal client sees it as a no brainer. I want this right. Um, the speaking offer, just to go back to that for just one moment, I have been looking for a speaking offer for probably as long as we've had a PR offer within bestseller publishing, which is like seven, maybe eight years, a long time. But it's only been the last 18 months that we started with a speaking offer. Why is that? Because I wanted to do it and I wanted to guarantee that we would do it for people. And that's it. And I said, unless we can meet that criteria, I'm not going to make this offer. So it wasn't until we were able to meet that criteria to be able to do it for them and guarantee the result, then we didn't have one. So it's only been the last 18 months that we came up with it and it is exploding. We did over a hundred thousand in revenue last month from that offer. And the offer is just a few months old. We just started bringing it to uh, the, the cold traffic marketplace. Why, why is it doing so well? Because it is a no brainer offer because it, Anybody that wants to speak an engagement looks at that offer and thinks, I mean, how could I say no to that? That's what you want to create. Uh, then you want to become a better wordsmith. Okay. This is where uh, maybe using chat GPT or AI might help be helpful. But at the very least, you want to, you want to create names and titles that um, give you some unique mechanism perspective. Okay. Uh, what is a unique mechanism? So when I started bestseller publishing, I realized that the traditional ghostwriting model was broken. You've probably heard me tell this story, so I'm not going to go into details with you, but it failed for me and it failed for many uh, people that wanted to become my clients and that I had conversations with. So I thought, well, we need to craft something new, something that's unique so that it captures both the content as well as the context. And this back and forth Q&A that traditional ghostwriters do doesn't work. So when we crafted it and it worked, what did we do? We renamed it and I trademarked it. We call it enhanced ghostwriting. Enhanced ghostwriting is our trademarked unique mechanism. It is not like traditional ghostwriting. I wanted to separate and differentiate that from traditional ghostwriting because traditional ghostwriting, as far as I'm concerned, doesn't work. At the very least, it doesn't work as effectively. 
in creating both great content that has story and that has context as enhanced ghostwriting. So I created a name and I even trademarked that name. Why? Because I wanted to differentiate myself. So becoming a better wordsmith is about differentiating yourself so people know there is a difference between the thing that you're offering and the thing that others are offering, right? Now, if there is no difference, then you can't just differentiate yourself with a name, right? There has to be a difference, right? There has to be something that makes your offer more compelling and better than somebody else's offer. And if you don't know what that is, then keep working until you find it, like I said I did with our speaker offer. Okay. All right. Then number four, and this is last, and this is more like a bell and whistle than it is the, the meat, right? This is, you know, this is the, the mushrooms uh, on the side of the steak, right? Uh, everything that I've just given you is the steak. It's the meat of the offer. So you want to stack value. Part of stacking value is bonuses, but there's more to bonuses. There's more to stacking value than just bonuses. So A, many of the problems that we've listed out, right, or that you're going to list out when you do this, and you've created and, and reformed in solutions can also be additional bonuses within your course or program. So I'll show you an example of that. So in our speaker offer, many people, because we tell them, look, we're going to book you on stages. Like that's our guarantee. Give us the money. If you're accepted in the program, then we guarantee to book you on three stages in 90 days. So what's the first thing somebody is afraid of? Before, because it this, this will work for a newbie speaker as well. So what did we do? We said, well, we want to solve that as well. So one of our bonuses right here is they get to be into something called HPS Core, HPS is Rogue Public Speaking with Michael and Amy Port. It's a two-day immersion with Michael in Michael's 20,000 square foot um, facility in New Jersey. And Michael is like the lead speaker trainer in the country. And so he's a uh, New York Times bestselling author. He gets $90,000 speaking fees. He's amazing. He's trained uh, thousands and thousands of speakers. So we let people know that that is that is a $3,500 value and it's our gift to you for free. So you're, you're afraid that your speech isn't going to be good. You're afraid that, you know, you, you've never done this for no problem. We got you covered. We're going to give that to you as a bonus. You're going to get to go make sure your speech is dialed in and, and that you kill it when you get on stage. You see, uh, see what we're doing here. Uh, that can be a great bonus. So, so if it's a problem, if it's a, you know, a, a challenge that somebody has in their mind, you can create a bonus and, and that bonus itself can be the solution to whatever challenges people face. You can create additional value via the delivery. You know, uh, recorded videos, uh, uh, work, workflow processes, uh, accountability partners, et cetera. All of those are potential additional value for a coaching program or a course or, or something like that. And then there are some examples, you know, one-on-one -on -one nutrition orientation, right? Uh, someone doesn't know. Uh, what they don't know about grocery shopping and and buying the right things to be on the right diet plan, et cetera. A recorded grocery tour, personalized meal plan, one-on-one -on -one feedback, you get the idea. Then there's a few things that you can use to really enhance value. Uh, and I'm not going to go into great detail on these, but they're pretty self-explanatory. Urgency, meaning that if you make an offer, then you put a deadline on that offer. So sometimes people will ask for something special. Or sometimes we'll offer something special. I'll tell my, my uh, sales team, hey, it's the last month of March. It's not, but let's say it is. And, uh, and so for this last week, anybody that gets started into any of our BSP programs, I'm going to give a free uh, TV slot to, meaning that we're going to book them on TV as part of their program. But they have to get started by the end of the month. If, get, if they get started on April 1st, Sorry, it doesn't work that way. So you put urgency in the offer, right? You create an offer and you say that it ends on this date and then you be a man or a woman of your word, you hold to integrity. And if they don't get started by that date, sorry, they don't get started by that date. Uh, it's certainly your prerogative to do that. That's urgency. Scarcity is uh, limiting the number of people that can join something. Uh, 
Uh, you can say, well, we're only going to open it up at this pricing and we're only going to open it up, um, you know, under these terms for the next 10 people. So scarcity goes without saying. Uh, naming, I've already covered that, like enhanced ghostwriting. And then I have highlighted guarantees. I love guarantees. And it's probably because of my background um, in real estate. When does a realtor get paid? They don't get paid for showing your house. They don't get paid for listing your house. They get paid when the deal closes, when the money transfers hands, when the title transfers hands, that's when they get, they get paid. That to me always resonated. And so with guarantees, that's part of what we do at BSP. It's part of what we've done with ASA uh, to make uh, this, these offers a no brainer for people is we reverse the risk. We say, look, we're going to take you on as a client. Yes, this is what your investment is. These are the things that you need to do, but we're going to do this for you or we're going to give you your money back. That's our guarantee. We're going to book you for these three speaking engagements or you get your money back. We're going to make you a best-selling author, right? So these things, these types of risk reversal guarantees will really uh, increase the value of your offer because people are afraid. They're afraid, you know, what if this person isn't going to live up to their end of the bargain. So put it in writing. Um, that is something that that we do. It's something that I recommend. So by doing it that way, you'll solve all their perceived problems, even internal, even even um, you know belief issues, limited belief issues, all of their obstacles, etc. Uh, you'll show your your program, your course, your service to be one of a kind. Right? Um, it's a category of one. It's a blue ocean because of the guarantee or because of what we're doing for you or because fill in the blank and uh, you make it impossible to compare. I've already said that it, uh, that that's really what you want is you don't want competition. You want to be in a category of one where there is no competition because what you do is so unique and exclusive. So if there's one thing, if there's one thing I would say to remember, if you don't remember any of this, if you can remember one thing, and that's this, if you can craft an offer that puts you in a category of your own, that, that is doing something that no one else in your genre field is offering and, and puts you in this blue ocean, then that will alone will be powerful enough to make your offer succeed. That, that's being in a category of one uh, we've done that with our guarantee to book you on three stages. No one else is doing that. You will see in the next couple of years, people will begin doing that. Just mark my words. You'll see that. That has not existed up until now, uh, where, where we are guaranteeing in writing that we're going to book you on these stages. Uh, and and the, the offer is, you know, incredible, even without that guarantee. But the guarantee just you know, it, it completely reverses the risk. You will see in a few years that other people will begin joining that category. And then we'll have to find a new way to separate ourselves and put ourselves into a category of one. Okay. So that's it. That's offer creation. Now, remember, um, you want to make more money, you need to make more offers. You want to make a bigger impact on the world, you need to make more offers. You want to get better at making offers, you need to make more offers. That, that, it is what it requires. If you're wondering why you're not making money and you think to yourself, when was the last time that I spoke to somebody on the phone and made an offer to them? If, if when was the last time that I did a workshop and made an offer to a group? If, if you don't have any recollection of doing that in the last few days, how could you make any money? I mean, how is it even possible? Uh, does money just show up? It doesn't. Uh, money is an exchange for value given. So you give value, you teach, you serve, you give, and then you say, would you like more? Would you like this result? Great. Here's what it will take to work with me. And, and 49 out of 50 people may say no, but that means you got to talk to 50 to get the one that's going to say yes. And guess what will happen? You'll get better. You'll get better at making offers. The very first month that I started Best Seller Publishing, and I made offers to people one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm pretty good on the telephone. And, and we had a pretty good offer. But the very first month, I took 80 phone calls 
and I made 80 offers to people and not a single one of those people took me up on the offer. 80 people. Well, the next month I got my first client and then more and then more and then more and, you know, $20 million in, in revenue later making offers. I got better at it and you will get better as well. Okay. All right. So there you go.